G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. As most may know, I was a Sega kid, and yes, in Australia, we pronounce it Sega. I grew up on the Master System and eventually upgraded to the Mega Drive, but the Master System especially will always have a special place in my heart, hence the hoodie. But before the Master System, Sega uh, did do the SC-1000 uh, and the SC-1000 Mark II, both of which shared very similar hardware. And another machine that shared the same hardware was the SC-3000 line of computers. There was two of them. This is the SC-3000, uh, and then there was the SC-3000H, uh, which had a considerably better keyboard. Last year, this guy managed to get his hands on an SC-3000, uh, and I was quite envious. And I said to him, if you ever decide to get rid of it, uh, I get first dibs. Then just this last week, we came up with a trade that we were both happy with, and I finally have in my collection an SC-3000. Now, I'm not going to try and tell you that this is like the greatest computer in the world. It's not. Um, but for me, at least, it's an important part of Sega's history. Now, regardless of the actual capabilities of the hardware, one thing I really do want to improve on this thing is the video out quality. Currently, it's running from Composite. Uh, these machines supported both Composite uh, and RF. Uh, and to be brutally honest with you, the composite really isn't that much better than the RF. So today I want to upgrade this machine using a TMS RGB board because this does run the TMS 9918 graphics chip. So we can use one of those. But I want to do it in a manner that's at least reasonably reversible. I don't want to be drilling holes into the case of the computer, for instance. It is going to require a little bit of hardware modification, but nothing that can't be reversed. So let's get stuck into it. So the first thing I want to do is strip this thing down to its main board. Much like that. The next thing I'm going to want to do is remove the RF modulator. That was easy. I'm not going to bullshit you. Uh, this was actually already removed. It was just sitting there because I've actually had to do some prep work for this video. This here is the TMS RGB board. You've seen these before on the channel. Um, I put one in my TI-994A uh, and also into my Dick Smith Wizard. Um, and they're pretty nifty. Basically, they just solder to the rear of the TMS uh, video chip. There's a series of spots you need to solder down to the underside of the chip. Uh, and all your signals come out the bottom. And here is the rear side uh, of the TMS chip. For safety's sake, I'm going to start by putting some capped on tape down the center here, just in case something decides to short, assuming I can find my capped on tape. Aha! Uh -huh. And of course, capped on tape is just a hair too wide. Good. Now, which way around does this go? Okay, on the TMS, that is pin one. It's the square one. Uh, and so we just solder it in place like that. One thing I will mention is use a healthy dose of solder on each point to make sure that it does actually create a bridge between the pin, it and the pin underneath. And let's run some quick checks. Where do you go? Good. Good. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. 
Next, let's tin these pads. All right, next we want our wires that are gonna run to uh, the output uh, and running along the bottom from, well, my left to right is ground, sync, blue, green, red, and five volt. And audio we wanna pick up from uh, the bottom of the DIN connector that normally runs out to the composite, well, the audio, uh, which is at the bottom of R6, uh, and that will do nicely. So with all that soldering done underneath, the board is back in the lower half of the case, uh, and the cables are simply running out through here, uh, because there's actually plenty of gap kind of between the case and the board uh, along the front there, uh, and these can come over there like that. So we actually now get to the next bit, which is how do we get the video out? Now I've removed the RF modulator, so that can probably give you a hint. So let's look at that. This here was a uh, panel mount uh, six pin mini DIN connector, uh, six pin mini DIN also being PS2. Uh, it originally looked like that. Uh, and after a trip to the bench grinder, it now looks like this. Uh, I have already wired up the rear of it, um, mainly because I think anyone who's ever soldered a normal DIN connector knows how painful that can be. Mini DINs are even worse. And we start by feeding this, assuming I can get all the wires, through like so. And that will essentially just sit there like that. Now you don't have to trim it, I like with a grinder. I just thought it was at least a little bit neater. But as you can probably tell, that's not really a suitable solution. So I've been 3D printing. So I designed and 3D printed these little guys. Essentially they act as a clamp but not only to stop the thing falling out the back, uh, the height is just right to uh, keep it against the main board, but also use one of the little plastic bits that kind of hang off the back to stop it rotating. Now, this isn't going to be the easiest thing to film, but um, we take the larger of the two and slide it in underneath like so. Uh, and this little guy goes in over the top and it has a notch that lines up with the little plastic knob that comes off uh, the SV, well, the mini DIN. Uh, and then it's just two screws. And that's it. I mean, it's not like dead, dead tight. There's a little bit of movement, but it's strong enough, it's not going to pull out, it's not going to randomly rotate, um, and so that should pretty much do that. Now, at this point, I could simply uh, wire this to, you know, this and be done. But I have a bit of a thing about having disconnects, uh, and if I was to do that, essentially the board would be attached to the case, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is essentially just use um, some header pins uh, and create a disconnect. We'll start by shortening some of this because they don't need to be that long. Watch me regret how long, how short I cut this. Let's tin the ends of these. Heat shrink. 
because if I don't do it now, I'll forget. Now possibly the least fun bit, uh, attaching these. Uh, I might start from the other end. So I don't get in the way of myself. Right, that is connected. Uh, now I just need to take care of the heat shrink. I'm going to put that into the category of not horrible. What I need to do now is uh, essentially put a header socket, I guess you would call it, is that what they're called? Uh, and just simply solder it up to the ends of the wires that come off the TMS board. So I'm not going to pretend that this all went to plan. I even busted out an oscilloscope, all to find that I had a short on the sink line in my SCART cable. Let me kind of make this less bad, and I'll be back with you in a minute. It is back together, and working too, believe it or not. Um, I've got the multi-card in, uh, so we can check out some games, but also we can check out uh, what, if any, quality benefit there has been by doing this mod, uh, because this television has both native SCART and composite, so I can easily flip between the two. So let's start by taking a look at what a basic menu looks like. So this is composite. Um, it's very soft, it's quite blurry, uh, and it does have a decent amount of kind of artifacting and shimmering going on. So if I change to RGB, that's what RGB looks like. It is, uh, I'm not going to call it perfect. This television, this monitor is actually kind of soft, but it's certainly a big step up from what we had from Composite. So I'm now going to spin up a game and we can check out the difference there as well. That's the title screen from Monaco GP, and that's the same again now in RGB. All in all, I actually think it's quite the improvement. Now, in saying that, this is possibly the worst port of Wonder Boy ever. Can I have some flicker with my poor scrolling? So I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that this is the greatest game system on the planet. It just isn't. Um, but it's kind of interesting to see... What? Nuts. It's kind of interesting to see where uh, Sega came from. And in saying that, this is actually a pretty decent port of uh, Load Runner. Whoop. Okay, where are you going to go? Nope. No. Damn it. Come on, can I get that last one? Oops, no, there's one more. Hey, got it. Oh, wait, now I've got to get out of here. Nice. And that is an RGB mod on the SC3000. It is a big improvement. I'm still not 100% sure on the color balance, um, although flipping between um, on some other games between Composite and RGB, it seems about the same. I think some of the images that I've seen online might be NTSC, so maybe the colour palette is a little different. Now, I did have this plugged into my OSSC. Unfortunately, my OSSC is uh, giving me grief at the moment. It just kind of goes black every 10 or 15 seconds, and I don't know why, um, but it is super crispy uh, on the OSSC, I can tell you that. So is this upgrade worth it? 
yes and no. Yes, in the sense that it is a big upgrade uh, for this machine. I'm pretty happy with the way I went about it. Uh, I've learned some lessons, I'll get to that in a minute. In saying that, is this a machine I'm gonna sit down and use all the time? No. So from a time and expense point of view, I'll leave that decision to you. If you absolutely love this platform, then yes, absolutely. Now, I don't have an SG-1000, but I suspect um, it's pretty much the same routine. So what lessons did I learn? For starters, as much as it looks neater, I shouldn't have trimmed down um, the metal bracket around uh, the mini DIN connector on the back of this. It's a little loose, um, and I think had I, as much as it's a bit ugly, um, had I left the rest of the, the original bracket there, uh, it, wouldn't have it wouldn't be moving around anywhere near as much. Speaking of, um, I might even go back in and do this. I used a six pin mini DIN purely for the fact that that's what JCAR had in stock. Um, I should have used something uh, like an eight pin uh, mini DIN, which are available, uh, mainly because I'm using uh, the shield as my only ground. Now, don't get me wrong, it's sh the shield bit should be tied to ground anyway, um, but it's my only ground uh, going through the SCAR connector because at the end of the day, you've got RGB sync, five volt blanking, uh, ground and audio. But I hope you found that video useful, maybe a little interesting. Uh, thank you to Mark for finally letting this out of his cold dead hands uh, and it will take pride of place here in my collection. But if you like the video, click like, subscribe, all the usual YouTube-y stuff. As always, a massive shout out to my patrons who are scrolling up the screen as I speak. And if you'd like to help support the channel, there is a link in the description. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.